Okay, this is the characteristics of linear functions, outcome R5. Okay, uh, in outcome R4, we learn that a linear function can be represented in one of five ways. We can write a complete sentence. We can create a table of values. We can make a set of ordered pairs. We can write a linear equation. Or we can draw a graph. So we can identify the following characteristics for all linear functions. Every linear function is going to have a domain. That is all the x values. A range, that's all the y values, or the output values of the function. Every function is going to have a rate of change. For a linear function, the rate of change is constant. There's an independent variable, and there's a dependent variable. The independent variable, you should just recall or memorize this, that it's usually x in a pure math sense. In our applied kind of examples, uh, it's often something like time. It's a variable or it's something that occurs regard regardless of what you do. Okay? Whereas the dependent variable, which is usually the y value, depends on the independent variable like the x variable. Finally, we have a characteristics of the graph. We have a horizontal intercept and a vertical intercept. And except for horizontal lines or vertical lines, every line will have a horizontal intercept and a vertical intercept. The horizontal intercept being the x-intercept and the vertical intercept being the y-intercept. Okay, so here's one example for us to take a look at. Uh, we want to identify the domain, the range, the rate of change, etc., etc., for this linear function. Okay, so this is a candle that's burning. It starts off up here after zero hours of burning with 10 inches tall for, for the candle. And slowly it, it gets burnt and burnt and burnt and burnt. And we can follow the line all the way down. And then boom, after 10 hours, there's no candle remaining. Okay, so we want to identify all of the characteristics. First, the domain. The domain is the set of all x values, or the set of all, well, we'll say t values for the number of hours. In this case, 0 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 10. So the domain goes from 0 hours to 10 hours. For the range, that would be the height of the candle, which we'll call h. The range goes from zero, out, uh, 0 inches all the way up to 10 inches. Okay, the height of the candle at any given time in the burning is anywhere between 0 and 10 inches tall. Okay, the rate of change. Well, let's see. The rate of change is the independent variable divided by the dependent variable, or the change in the independent divided by the change in the independent. In this case, the dependent variable goes down 10, and the independent variable goes out 10. So it's negative 10 over 10. But how could we write that uh, as, as in terms of inches and hours? Well, the rate of change in this of this graph is really equal to negative one inch per hour. Okay, the independent variable, that's usually the variable down on the x-axis. Okay, that's the number of hours. In other words, it's time, t. And we should note that the independent variable usually uh, just doesn't care what happens to the dependent variable. In other words, time ticks by regardless of how quickly the candle burns or if it's burning or not. Whereas the dependent variable is h, the height of the candle. That changes and the amount, the height of the candle depends on how long it's been burning. It depends on time. For the horizontal and vertical intercepts, we can see them here. This is the horizontal intercept. 
the time at the point where the graph intersects with the x-axis or the t-axis in this case. So the horizontal intercept is 10 hours. Okay, and usually that carries some meaning. In this case, 10 hours, that represents how long it takes to complete the burning. Finally, for the vertical intercept, that's over here. The vertical intercept is 10 inches. And that vertical intercept rep represents the point where the line intercepts the y-axis, in this case the h-axis, and that is also representative of the original height of the candle. Okay, for this outcome, it's really not very useful to watch this video. You're going to have to try some problems out. So why don't you try the problems that are listed on the side. It's very important to do a number of them to kind of get a handle on this vocabulary list.